in the year since I've talked to him. So, and he started his own podcast or broadcast with interviews as well. So people can go check that out, but he can talk more about that. So Doug Kramer, are you there? I am. And it's really good to see you again, man. Awesome. I, I, I can't believe we did that on September 11th. That's so know. blown my mind. I know, yeah. It's so strange. We, we should have read up this one. I'll put this out September 11th. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah. 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 Anyway, we talked about a lot of stuff. We talked about kind of you being in Scientology, you, your experiences, how you got out, your family, your situation. I mean, where have you, I mean, where are you now? Like you kind of change your thing. Like I always think externally, when you look at Scientology, you look at it a cult, but then from the inside, you're really in a secret society and you have that on your YouTube. Can you talk about what it's like being inside, like you're in a secret society? It's exactly like being born into this world. You um, have no other reference point. So I was born into, because w- real quick, one of the things that um, I realized after coming out of Scientology, because of what I learned by being programmed, is that I wasn't stupid. It's just brainwashing was ubiquitous. It was everywhere. So if someone wanted a frame of reference and they're starting to maybe think that there's a lot of propaganda and stuff hitting them around them, it's not dissimilar to that. So I felt like I was kind of two worlds back. You know what I mean? So being born in Scientology was like being born into a microcosm of the macrocosm because my family was into it. I did have another frame of reference, my man, up until like nine or 10 years old, because I, that's when my dad got into it. And I started to get indoctrinated into it like right away. But I did have some point to go back to when I woke up out of it. I feel like I'm, I'm also drifting on the question that you asked. Could you, could you hone me in a little bit and ask? And- well, I mean, you got in young, your dad, we talked last time, your dad kind of got you into it. You became involved, but you're kind of feel like you're in a special clique or clique. I would say, much like if you're in maybe some other groups where they really treat you special, but it's a secret society. So you're thinking in your mind, I've got something special nobody else has. Is that correct? Okay, yeah, it's definitely like that. And and that's a trip because I don't look at Hubbard as an idiot and I don't look at him like just some psychopath, even though he was, you know, he didn't have a conscience. I realized he was a very clever man because these techniques, um, like we were talking about a second ago, they're everywhere. And I was totally blind to any of this. So I know it looks stupid from the outside, but when we were in there, we were love bomb and boosted up. It seemed like we were help being helped. I trusted L. Ron Hubbard once I got into it. And of course I trust my parents because they're not trying to harm me. They went through the brainwashing process too. So I trust my dad, you know, when he, I didn't like Scientology. I knew something was wrong with it, but I, that outweighed the fact that my dad has to know what he's talking about. So very slowly, your ego grandification goes up and up and up and you start feeling special. And that also pulls you away from the real world because now you're taught slowly to look down on people. So the more the ego goes up, the more you feel like you're in a secret society and you feel like you're learning these secrets. Cause like I said, you're learning a technology kind of in a bad way that isn't taught to us in school, you know? I mean, a lot of school is just brainwashing itself. So you just don't have any other frame of reference, right? right? So so yes, my man, I felt super special. And that was one of the hardest things about getting out of it, William, is like trying to let go of the high and not being special and being brought down to size. And that actually was a really hard, but really therapeutic process. I wanna say real quick that a lot of the ex-Scientologists community people that speak out about it are XC org and I as an ex Scientologist see that they haven't even started that process. They're they yeah. it's the indoctrination so powerful. They'll carry that C org mentality. Almost the entire narrative is controlled by the C org members, by the way. That's why I personally wanted to start talking out of because I don't belong to that click either. I don't belong to that narrative. I wanted to speak for all the people and we'll have more people on because they're coming over that actually can just say whatever they want to say about the experience. That brings us back to the point where you're so special and you're so convinced that you have something special unless you really deprogram you're just going to still be that special person you're just going to be out of the cult you know what i mean that's 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 a good point you brought up because that that's the one of the major things that makes it keeps you in there to give up that and then when you get out to give up that specialness it's hard it's interesting but i think that's the that's a commonality in a lot of these cults is 
come with us, you're in our clique, you're in our group, whether it's the Sea Org, which is like the specialty mm-hmm. group within Scientology, you know, so that's very, it's something about the human condition that all of us really want to have. Like, so all these promises of the chosen or an insider, it's just really interesting how that works within Scientology. And you kind of see more like, I mean, I'm 52, like I've been through so many, mind, I haven't been through Scientology, but I've been through mind control situations where they're telling, I mean, I listen to the news and politicians who are really not much different than cult leaders, in my opinion, or even these political parties. Can you extrapolate your experience as a Scientologist to the larger outside world? Dude, totally. Uh, I'm glad you asked that because this is one of the, the another disappointing part about coming out of the cult. William, I thought we as ex-Scientologists, because of the amount of mind control that's in Scientology, like you said, they all do the same, but this one's a little bit special because to reverse engineer it is to understand the world you live in. So I figured that everybody that was coming out was having this revelation where they were starting to see, okay, I understand Scientology. Oh my God, is there possibly a global version of this? Does this exist elsewhere? You know what I mean? Is this happening on a bigger scale? Because one of the first revelations that I had, a big revelations, maybe a year, year and a half out of just studying Scientology, is my eyes opened up when I was learning this stuff. So I couldn't help but notice. And also, I was I also had this thought, which I'm surprised more of the exes don't question. If I could be lied to my whole life for 30 years on this scale and be totally oblivious of it, and then suddenly wake up in a day. Is it possible that this has been figured out a long time ago, that Hubbard didn't come up with this? Is there a global version of this? It's not, I'm not, I wasn't naturally a conspiracy theorist, William, but Scientology itself is a huge conspiracy. So I was least open to the idea that, you know, without shutting that down, because as soon as you go any further beyond that, because you have to, in order to show the connections of Scientology, Nobody wants to go there. But for me, I didn't go looking for a conspiracy. I came out of a conspiracy and I couldn't help but notice what I was learning through the television, the educate, quote unquote, education system. Dude, everywhere. And just like in Scientology, in order to keep you in, you have to be hit from every angle and it has to be 24 seven. When I was on television acting, I was starting to wake up and I got rid of my television So even when I was acting, I didn't have a television. And just getting rid of that, all of a sudden, a few months later, I automatically started to, my brain changed. And I was like, dude, what, William, it it was so many layers coming out of this thing. But even getting rid of my television, I started to notice the same things that I was experiencing in Scientology. Because it it has to be constant and it has to be from every angle because it's not our natural state to remain brainwashed and to be out of touch with who we are. So I went through an explosion, not just out of Scientology, but the freaking world we live in, man. I mean, imagine people who listen to talk radio all day or at Fox or MSNBC in the background, what they're being reinforced with, not just political propaganda, but corporate propaganda to take this pill. This pill is good for you. Yes. Uh, this is your all solution the all the time. Imagine how those people are shaped. And I think it's really important because you may have somebody just like Scientology, I think is very controlling, but there may be somebody who isn't, doesn't say they're in a cult who has, has been just programmed with those narratives over and over and over again, listening to Fox news or some of these other things, NPR, even I know people on NPR they might as well be in a zombie state. They just absorb so much. Pee. And it's, I don't think yeah. it's, it's both sides of the political perspective. Would you agree with that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with everything you just said. And I don't think it's a shame or it's any kind of condemnation to say that I was brainwashed because the way I look at it, it's just my opinion. I don't want to push my ideas on anybody else. I'm just trying to tell my story. You know, I don't, I'm not trying to get anybody into my cult or preach anything. I just got to tell you though, man, I was super disappointed um, coming out and I had to go through all these trusted ex-Scientologists that I thought were on the same page that just were not. And I'm like, the it's so ubiquitous. It's so everywhere. Even if you have the NPR or whatever Fox News running in the background, right? I learned that that's going in 24 seven. It's so everywhere. The propaganda, the edu- we go through the sausage machine called the education system. 
that's 100% brainwashing if you break it down. Additionally, whose sources of information 100%. are you getting? Yeah, 100%, 100% brainwashing. But that's obvious. Taking- that's obvious right. when you come out of a cult, William. That's why I'm saying, like, the exes, we were supposed to save the world. I thought the ex Scientologists in particular were going to be the ones that were going to, like, you know, lead the charge and expose, like, you know, the bigger. I can't even know what I can say on here, dude, because we're on YouTube, right? So, but you, you dude, it it's so. My point get, is, there's no, It doesn't matter if I get I'm, kicked I'm off. I want to protect you, man. We don't want no, because, you to get kicked off again. No, don't worry about it. I got the guys at Odyssey to move all of my content over to Odyssey. So it's not oh, going nice. to be memory hold. It will not be. Dude, nice. These guys I'm going to go modern, over there soon and join you. Yeah, these do. Please go to Odyssey. I think everybody should go to Odyssey. But these guys are not just censors. They're book burners because they've gotten rid of all kinds of stuff in the past on a variety yeah. of subjects that I didn't even think were important or anything. But they have burned the books and it's kind of like year zero nonsense, stripping the mind almost like a cult. So YouTube is a very, ev- in my opinion, an evil organization. I'm just using it because it's a streaming service. If there's another yeah. company that has better technology, I will be off of here in a nanosecond. Sorry. Bro, I'm freaking joining you, man. I'm, I, this is another frustrating thing. It's like, can't you see that you might be like raw, raw because you don't like so-and-so and you're glad they're censored? They're coming for all of us, man. They're, they're you're, sooner or later, you ain't going to have a voice. If you can't suss that by now yeah. Yeah. with the YouTube censorship. Now, what you obviously have something to hide. If, you know, there's propaganda coming at us from one angle and then anything against the official narrative, you're gone, cancel culture the whole night. The fact that anybody yeah. doesn't see what's going on with that alone. Let's leave all Dude, the science, so debate, and everything aside. That alone it's is so a cult, true. bro. That's it's so true. Does. It's so true. Oh it, my gosh. We're living in a cult. You don't censor like, anything. Oh, oh it dude. It's couldn't so, be more it should true. be really obvious so by profound. now. But yeah. That's, yeah. So like, profound, I, I said I'm one of... Yeah, you. Yeah, man, it's good to talk to you, bro. Because yeah. I have to kind of suppress talking uh, this openly, some on because of YouTube, because of the very censorship. And so, uh, I'm glad, by the way, man, that you, you know Odyssey. I've been. I heard about that the other day. I'm gonna. I don't. I. I really want to start talking a lot. I don't talk in code, but I want to start talking. I, I can't. I don't like to be. I don't like to have. Dude, I, I just came out of a cult for. William, check this out, man. But they're self They're out. making sure we self-censor ourselves. That's the real. I refuse to do that. that yeah. 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 There's the subtlety of what's happening. And and again, if we didn't, if I didn't get in the cold, I wouldn't have studied in this shit stuff. Sorry. And saw the subtlety of what you're talking about about the self censor I know I can see exactly what's going on, dude. But let's say no, you didn't. I mean, grow you up would know. That's Jehovah, why Jehovah's Witnesses or the Mormons. Yeah. yeah. You you might not. It's so big and so everywhere. It's the only world that we know. Why would you question it? Why would you? Honestly, that's why I think, you know, I don't call Scientologists or my family like sheep or, you know, brainwash idiots. Sometimes I get a little frustrated, but they're, dude, they're, most of them are victims. They have no idea what's going on. So if we educate people, they can snap out of it. You know what I mean? But, but it's really, it's so dangerous what's happening with this censorship that you're talking about. It is frightening to watch people not only not seeing it, but encouraging it and, and not realizing where that's going to lead soon. Yeah, we're not in a static environment. We're moving towards something very dark and dangerous. It's unbelievable. Like you yep. would know, man, if somebody in your, you're probably much more sensitive to it. And that's the real subtle element is the ob- lack of objectivity of the average American of what's going on. It's like, whoa. This is really dangerous. Yeah. Dude, you're right about that. I'm so sensitive to this that I'm having a real problem with this in particular. I'm I'm really pissed off in a lot of ways. That's why I feel like I'm getting a lot of healing by being able to speak and I'm trying to keep my YouTube there as long as possible. You it's helping to. me heal. But like I said, yeah, but I know that that's coming to it at a certain point, especially when we you go gotta deeper keep, to these You got to keep copies of everything, dude, on a, an external hard drive. I already got it. So yeah, I already dude, got them. As long as you're doing that, I just, you know you can yeah. re-upload it. Yeah, I got the external a couple of weeks ago. All this ago. stuff is so on. important. All these things are so important because you don't know where somebody is on their journey, whether they're in Scientology, mm-hmm. out of Scientology, just came out of uh, Jehovah's Witnesses or what. So they mm-hmm. may key into different parts, whether they're trying to get a loved one out. They may come into different parts mm-hmm. of your record. And so having that stuff there mm-hmm. is so important. Man. Sorry. 
Yeah, well said, man. Is that your car or my car? <laughs> no, it's mine, sir. I'm in a room with no cross air, so I had to keep the window open. I just was hey, like I'm digging the new green screen. Oh, thanks, man. I'm digging so, the new green screen, man. <laughs> maybe, I mean, yeah, so we're kind of in an environment where we're being bombarded into a cult-like 1984 world. Yes. And we're in the fishbowl. What is this? Mm -hmm. I mean, for somebody who's come out of this, what do you think solutions are solutions are for humanity? I mean, where were, what would, what do we need to improve out of this situation? Crikey. If I knew that, William, I would probably be like L. Ron Hubbard, be able to sell a bunch of books and make a bunch of money. That is the question, right? I'm, I wrestle with that every day. I, what, I mean, what can we do except, Hey, I had this experience. This is what I learned. Um, I can see what's going on. Anybody else that can see what's going on, speak what you know. You know, they, one of the benefits of growing up in Scientology is that it made me absolutely fearless about speaking my truth because they took that away from me for my whole life. I never had it. And they make their own enemies because they teach you everything if you live to survive about it. And they also have a tendency to get empathic or somewhat intelligent people. That's how the mind control works. They don't get idiots for the most part. So they make their enemies and they make their people that are going to come after them. And rather than, you know, trying to fight them on their level, I think we can, I think we can bypass the psychopaths in the world that are uh, controlling us. And we can just, this is going to sound so corny, dude, but I, I would, I honestly believe in this. We can beat them with love and education. We can just, I don't think every, I think most people are under a spell that are buying into this and we have an opportunity now for people to maybe be forced to see that because i don't think human nature myself included changes until they have to their back has to be up against the wall so this is what's happening i feel and so it's an opportunity as well as amazing danger um but i think anybody that anybody at all that's aware of what's going on wherever they have so any everybody has a piece of the puzzle so we got to freaking speak out man and just yeah. um, and then not not play at their level and fight amongst each other and, you know, keep right. focused on just, hey, here's my experience. You know, don't beat it down anybody's throat. Just share what you know. And 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 did, that makes them the more they censor and the more they're the more the more they do that, they're just showing their hand. And anybody that does that's actually very, very scared and cowardly. So they're they're the ones that are afraid. We actually have the power, man, and we can. We can beat them by not even playing their own game, but just trying to educate people. All of us. That totally dude, I'm agree. not. I don't know. I'm not God, dude. I don't know the answers to that that huge question you asked. I just am so frustrated with what's going on. I was also kind of prepared for this because you know I learned a lot coming out of the cult, so it wasn't a total shock. What is a shock is the scale of deceit, deception, and corniness of what's going on. That I'm a little surprised that we're over 18 months deep in this without the majority sussing what's up. So how do you see this whole COVID narrative and, and Scientology compare? How do you compare them to each other? That's a great question. Can I just say something on that real quick too, by yeah, the way? Because sure. when we have, we have coming out of the ex Scientology community, all of them believing in the COVID narrative. Um, Chris Shelton's pushing it. Um, John Atac. Um, these people that you would expect to be able to see what's going on have they can't see it william they can't i don't this is what i this is what i told you earlier about the big heartbreak coming out i went to tony ortega's blog and i hung out there and i thought they were all having the same revelations i was i then got sucked in by karen daly carrier who's a full-on l ron hubbard loving you know ex-scientologist that's dark as a demon I'm going to have more to say about her. I'm not trying to be mean to these people, but what I'm trying to tell you is before I you know, answer that question is just getting out of Scientology is one step. Then you have to survive the controlled opposition. And here the whole time I'm thinking everybody's seeing the same stuff I was and on the same page. So just because you were born in Scientology doesn't mean that you don't buy into the official narrative. Most of them um, do. And there's also this funny thing, bro. Where the science, check this out, and this might lead into maybe one of the next questions that you had. You know, I've been talking lately, and I'm going to go into more detail about how um, the cult represent. It's it's basically an MK Ultra project. Uh, you know, Scientology. So, so it's really an offshoot out of the government's MK Ultra. Do you believe that? One hundred percent. 
Okay. And this is really complex though. So I don't want to, this is why I'm doing videos and going step by step and slowly. And I'm also learning more as I go. This whole process is just making me learn even more. Definitely. It was related to that. And it's funny because, you know, Jolly West was fighting L Ron Hubbard. This is what I wanted to say about the Scientology mentality and psychiatry. He had a lot of things, right? This is why people have such a difficult time abandoning the tech and Hubbard and all of it and starting over with the new thing because Hubbard, what attracted a lot of us is he was anti-system. He's anti-psychiatry. They're over-drugging people. They're, now he took it to the extreme and said psychs are on the whole track, meaning all past lives all throughout the century. These are the guys behind everything. Christ, maybe he's right with that too. Who knows? But what I'm saying is what makes that trap so powerful is while L. Ron Hubbard was fighting the system and giving us a lot of tools to do that, he was doing the same thing with the MK Ultra Project and Jolly West and everything, and they were fighting each other. We were told Jolly West was the evil psychiatrist, but he was doing a subtler version and doing the exact same thing to us. So the way it works is they, you know this, they all fight amongst each other, but they're all psychopaths and they're oppo-sames. They're, they fight amongst each other because L. Ron Hubbard wants the brainwashing technology. No, Jolly West will own it. But they're right. all doing the same thing. I think that Jolly West and, and, and Associates were a little bit jealous of Hubbard because he had a, a better version of it. It was way more right. subtle than what, what you and Cameron and stuff was doing. And also, they're just pawns in a game they don't understand. So L. Ron Hubbard thought he was Satan and the big guy. These guys all have egos. Jolly West knew what he was doing was right. And yet they're just operatives, you know, for, for the intelligence uh, things, because those are the ones running the show, as you know. So, dude, right. everybody's a pawn in this, in this, and it gets really complex. That's why I'm saying it's so hard for ex-Scientologists to figure out what was true, what wasn't, who was on. And, and at the end of all this, I can tell you, it's all a con. Left, right, like you were saying earlier in the interview, Biden, Trump, dude, that's the trap. There, It's all. BS. It's all the same thing. It just looks like as soon as it you pick like a side, man, right. you're doomed. Right. Yeah. Why pick a side? Why not pick a side on principles mm -hmm. or ideas or something more values and, and doing what's and right? Yeah, exactly, dude. Exactly. Where do you think Hubbard came across the MK Ultra techniques? Do you think he had a handler, or did he come across a manual? There had to have been something where he went, "Ding, I'm I'm on board with." What these guys are doing in the 50s right that's kind of the hundred dollar question i don't have an answer yeah. for that um i don't either i will get to that I'll, i'm gonna figure that out um well i heard so much, and maybe you know how, just sorry to interrupt but uh fletcher no, Prudy no, said that hubbard's war records were fake that it was a legend that it was an intel legend and that he had yeah, some kind it, of intel yeah. things going on according to fletcher Prudy, that it was there was a cover for that, so I, he had to have had some kind of military intel. And Hubbard's an intelligent guy, right? So maybe he got drafted even back then. Yeah, I'm sure that that's the case. And also, um, you know, if you ask John Atac, he'll say Fletcher Prouty's, you know, BS and this that. There's there's a lot. I don't, you know, this is this is the way I see it in the basic way, and you know how this works. So I don't know all the details yet. There's enough circumstantial evidence. And also, as you know, you're probably never going to find the smoking gun, you know, for Sir Hans or Han, JFK. But you can put the evidence together and come up with an idea. For sure, he was an intelligent asset of some sort. He probably learned it in the military. And this is this is my hypothesis so far. <clears throat> People like Hubbard when he was a kid who's um, already a, a demonstrating sociopathic tendencies, deviant tendencies. He's getting into black magic at 15 with the book of the law. Right. He wants to, follow in the wants to follow in the military like his father. He's going to go on, undergo something. I actually think he might have, they thought he was crazy. And I think they might have messed with them with those projects. And perhaps he vowed vengeance or he, see, he, when you're that devious and that intelligent, the higher ups have a use for you. So they right. look for those people just Absolutely. like in Scientology. That's why they put Rinder at the top of OSA in Scientology and why I would never make it. This is something people need to question when they're coming out. I, I'm not trying to bash on these people. I'm just saying Mike Rinder is the equivalent of the head of the CIA, Alan Dulles, coming out and then speaking out about the truth. You have to understand the level of compartmentalization and programming and deviousness that it might take to get to one of those levels. And again, everybody's a pawn in the secret society. It's a, it's um, compartmentalized. Only the guy at the top knows. And even Hubbard's controlled in a certain way, right? right? So 
it's this huge, I know you know how all this works. It's just some of the <laughs> people that experiment. listen on my channel might be going, oh, dude, this guy's a conspiracy nutter. Unsubscribe. Yeah. He lost. No, but dude, I, like some of I these said, major corporate, hey, man, you can say this cult is there, but some corporate entities are very similar to cults. Top down, pyramidal, yes. compartmentalized, that's a, only that's need to know basis, yeah. stealth mode. You'd be surprised how much a corporation is similar to a cult. And, and Hubbard, I know, that. I know for a fact Hubbard's had an Intel interest very early, like very early 1820s. There's those early pictures of him with the Stetson, not the fedora hat, the glasses. He's clearly mm -hmm. had intelligence oh, enough and, to and William, he's also going off and doing these mineral things that he went on this island. And, and even when they you know, were in, I don't remember what port it was, that even the people were throwing rocks at him saying CIA. He did a lot of peculiar things where it would make sense if it was an off-book intelligence agency. That would connect the dots on why he would be doing all these rather strange things that have shore stories as the explanation as to why they were really doing that but this is the way it works dude so it's not even probably a hypothesis like there's no way hubbard would get away with everything that he did and avoid jail and there's no way it would still be here right now today unless there was something protecting it and this is the part that, that leah remini god bless her see when i came out of this i purposely said because I, dude, I thought I was going to be out of this in two years and I was going to go back to acting because I didn't, I lost my mind. I'm like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. It'll probably take about two years to deprogram. That's what I need to do. And then I'm going to go back into Hollywood, bro. Now Hollywood, now the bigger picture opens up. So I want to be a gung-ho person coming out and taking down Scientology. Leah did so much awesome work. She did three seasons uh, uh, on, you know, the aftermath. She, she got so much exposure where people didn't know before. They just thought it was a kooky UFO cult. Now they're like, oh my gosh, look at the damage that they do. But in my opinion, if you don't understand the scale of what you're dealing with, you're going to keep beating your head against the wall like she is going, why isn't the public outcry enough? Why isn't it enough? Well, that's a great question. And we're that's that's why, dude. Because think about it. If you... If you have a multi-billion dollar organization like Scientology, you have Tom Cruise, um, Elizabeth Moss, Michael Pena, you have all these, uh, there's a lot more celebrities. Well, you need control of celebrities because unfortunately that's the way this works. They influence the public. So those people have to be under control. 90%, 95%, maybe 100% of the top stars are under some form of mind control and they usually belong to a cult. That might be surprising um, to some people, but I'm quite sure you're up to speed on that right you know that the stars have to be controlled because they're going to control and influence the public sell the products people mindlessly listen to what celebrities say as if they're somehow Always. somehow yeah. better than other people that's there's a huge market for yeah there's a huge market for just the watch the celebrity wears the clothes the jewelry it's stupid it's shoes. so stupid it's so crazy it's totally that it stupid. works william so yeah. if you're something if you're an entity like scientology is that something that you would want to go away or is that something that would be a valuable asset to collect information and intelligence on very powerful and not just celebrities. They have uh, political leaders, they infiltrate police governments, the whole thing. And you know about Operation Super Starlight. Valuable. So just think, of, right. just think about it. And I think this is part of why um, the MKUltra doctors were fighting Hubbard because he he was using and stealing, and I'm sure he was hip to that. You know how it works. It's it's all kind of control from above, but they fight each other at this level. Right. I think that they were jealous that because they were studying cults, West and, and Cameron and all these plus, they were actually studying cults because they recognized this mind control has been going on throughout human history, but the right. cults had it perfected more. So that's when they became interested in Hubbard. And that's when Hubbard said, Oh no, no, Jolly, I'm gonna and he dude, they went after him. When I was a Scientologist, he was Hitler, dude. He was like the, the, the psychiatrist and then when you come out and realize you're playing on the both the same team and that hubbard perhaps had even a better version of mk ultra right you could see right. perhaps why they were fighting each other but but it's you get lost in all the I, it's all right it's, yeah it's all the but same the thing. broader picture of scientology is mk ultra with all of the beta alpha delta beta yeah and then the suicide state. yeah Right, and then the suicide programming at the end, which Scientology That's, has and MK Ultra has, it's dude, unbelievable. Yeah, 
that's a, I'm so, you ask such awesome things that get me fired up because those OT levels do have suicide programming and they're the, they're where you create the multiple personality, the DID, the disassociative identity disorder. That's what, that's what MK Ultra was trying to do. I'm going to do when they we did. get up to those they OT did levels. It, they well, pre- they, but here's, they here's another it. thing, William, though. People just think that, oh, Hubbard just was delusional and he just, and this is partly true, and just randomly came up with this from a science fiction story. He just used Alice in Wonderland. These are MK tools, programming um, scripts. And to look at Scientology from that angle, I'm going to break down the OT level specifically showing all this. The way it hides itself from people and why people MK ultra programming and all this stuff seems impossible or weird is because there's so many layers to trying to figure this freaking thing out. I mean, but many people have long since. It's just to get people up to speed because as long as Scientology is seen as where's Shelly Miscavige, wacky this, like, that what they don't want is how is a trick done? That's why I right. loved Arnie Lerma so much. Arnie was focused on the right intention. How is the trick done so we can actually snap people out of this and take them down? As long as you have the controlled opposition talking about Xenu, where's Shelly? That's right. a missing person. It's important, but it's a distraction. What what they don't want you to talk about is the MK Ultra part and the fact that it's that it's backed by power. Why do they get their tax exempt status? It's a bigger picture. And right. they purposely keep people focused on um, keeping Scientology working by, again, having the controlled opposition work against Scientology. So they seem to be fighting, but it keeps Scientology there. And it will always stay there. It will always be because there. Because they until they, like Arnie Lerma right. said. How's it, right. What did I mean, Arnie Lerma how can say? You take, how can you take a problem down? How can you? So Scientology is a problem in this world. We know what they're doing. Well, okay, how can you solve that if you don't even know what the root of the problem is and you keep circling the drain? To understand what it is, is to be able to finally do something about it. And that's what, it's not just Scientology. There's controlled opposition groups and everything coming out of the JWs and you name it. It's really, only a few of them actually see the global version. They mostly just, it takes a long time just to get out of Scientology. But like I said, to me, it was so obvious that the world itself was structured that way. That only took me two years to figure out coming out of Scientology that I figured everybody was on board with that. Dude, not only are they not on board, that keeps Scientology working because there's no solutions if you don't actually locate the problem. Right. And if so you don't go much to the core. Right. You have exactly. To go to the core. Yeah. So much of it goes back to the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s when they were developing this technology with the intention to take over the whole world, the more, the, the more do when technology came in and when things really started kicking off, you and I aren't psychopaths and most people in this world aren't. So they can't contemplate the scale of evil that people like Hubbard and stuff would be plotting day and night. How can we take over this world? So it's not on our radar, but they're honing like a science, how to do this. And we're planning all the way back in the forties, about how can we apply this to the global scale because we want to rule the world. And then if you suggest that that's happening, especially in a time right now when it should be a little obvious that maybe something weird's happening, they roll their eyes back in their head and they say, conspiracy nutter. You're just a conspiracy nutter. Uh, Hey man, I'm like I said, I I feel like I'm the perfect lab rat coming out of Scientology because I didn't believe in any of that stuff. I mean, L. Ron Hubbard was a master conspirator. And he... I didn't, but I, it just sound, all sounds like gibberish. Maybe somebody got right. Or it's just like, he was a paranoid, you know, freak, but in between all that, you know, that's why I say, if you have a clearer picture of Scientology's roots, it makes sense why he hated psychiatrists. It makes sense as, as to this, everything starts to make sense. When you understand that as soon as we got technology, especially with the internet nowadays, the ability to actually right. put the entire world under permanent mind control became possible. And if people don't think that there's people that, work on that day and night they're living in a fantasy world fantasy world absolutely and i mean i think hubbard himself like i think that don't you think that some of his inquiries were actual tests so not only did he have the tech but he was constantly working and adjusting and trying to figure out what worked with people and what didn't work to really put them under his i mean he he repeated crowley's dictums people are my slaves all that stuff so he was Mm -hmm. constantly trying to get people i mean it feels it seems like his tech didn't just come out of whole cloth would you agree with that that it was something that was evolving and developed over time 
Totally. I think it's been with us since known human history. In fact, I was just watching a video researching Jolly West today and Margaret Singer was talking about, and this is a respected psychologist who was also part of the MKUltra program, um, where she said that this has been around, you know, since how to manipulate humankind and, and the mind has been around forever. This is what I think happened. He, like I said, was a deviant personality to begin with. And he came across Crowley's work, and to him, that was the key. In fact, in 1951, maybe 52-ish, he gave the Philadelphia Doctorate Chorus Lectures. These are very famous lectures in Scientology. And according to Nibs, who was his son, he felt like he cracked Crowley's work finally. He felt like he went beyond that, and he finally had the key. So he was rubbing these ancient texts of Crowley right before he giving was the one these who lectures in Philadelphia. Well, the one who came he after believed in it, the though. Book of Allah, yeah, yeah. So, so when you're saying, did he mix things? Yes, he used mind control, he used NLP. He grabbed everything he could while, you know, thinking he was helping people because he was, he was a psychopath. So he probably didn't think he was harming. He had to all justify it probably. But he was coming across all these various different keys. And I think, you know, if you go back to John D, if, if just pick your black magician. They all stumble across this. And then this is what's mind blowing to me. Because when I stumbled across this, across this by being stuck in Scientology and learning about it when I came out, my first thought was if I run across this occulted knowledge, occulted knowledge, I would want to do it. I'd want to uplift people and help people with it. Because, you know, it sounds, if anybody's new to this, it sounds, especially when I came into this, it sounds crazy. Like, what do you mean Satanism? And it just, you know, a lot of people turn off to that. But when I was first learning about that, I was like, well, I don't believe any of that, but very interesting. Like, tell me more. So dude, when I went down that dark alley, this knowledge, it's simply knowledge, like a cult means hidden, right? So this right. knowledge about how our minds work and how reality works and deep wisdom is in there. Um, it's not good or bad. It's just the way that these people use it. it. It's just everyone that comes across this seems to be using it to control people. So when Hubbard right. or these other black magicians come across this, um, I think they just repeat the same pattern that's been going on throughout history. It seems it's like, dude, where are the people that are actually stumbling across this knowledge, using it to uplift humanity? Because it doesn't seem like there's. I mean, I know, I know. I'm not saying I'm one of those, dude. I don't. I'm learning about this stuff, but you would have think throughout history, somebody or may, why couldn't we have had more good guys come across this occulted knowledge and share it? So we didn't have secrets, and we didn't have secret societies. It shouldn't be a secret who we are, dude, and it shouldn't be a secret as to how our own mind works. We shouldn't have to go to school and have be shut down before we even start life and then just be a computer program running through life. Like this is our, we should have this knowledge about ourselves and it, it, it exists. I, I didn't go looking for it. I came across this understanding by being born into this crap, you know? Right. That's why I feel like, I, that's why I feel lucky, William, in a certain way, because it is a cult of knowledge. How the heck am I going to come across this or de-brainwash myself? But that's in the its bigger power. Problem. I didn't once have the it, experience. Either. Right. Once it becomes yes. de-occulted, then it loses its power. The secrecy is the power in the, in the hands of the, the magician. I mean, they have to kind of put Hubbard into that position as a magician or magician or something mm -hmm. like that, or a wizard of yeah, Oz. Totally. Did you ever come across him uh, being involved in sorcery of any kind? You know, I think he's done a lot. I'm learning more as I go, but you, he's he had a lot of involvement in black magic. There's the one that people know where he was um, out in Pasadena with Jack Parsons trying to do the moon child. Right, the that's Babylon a whole. That was a ritual that Crowley even said, "Dude, this guy's crazy." So if you have like Crowley saying that you know you're doing something that you shouldn't be doing, that shows you kind of how devious Hubbard was. He has the Cali ritual that he did, you know, with his. Um, Sea Org members, his, his slaves that he had on his ship. But even more so than that, Nibs. Well, can, you explain, can you explain that in greater detail, what the Cali ritual was? I don't know too much about that. That's that's not already online. It was a black magic ritual. I don't think it was a big deal, to be honest with you. I don't think it was as big as the stuff he was into earlier. But this was a, um, a ritual where he was on the ship and some of his Sea Org members or slaves had done something wrong. And they had to destroy the org. They had to make mock-ups of the orgs because these were bad people that weren't applying Scientology, according to Hubbard. And so he just put them through this, this Cali ritual, they call it, to destroy all the orgs. But I think his real involvement <laughs> is this. Nibs said that black magic, Satanism, was the only religion in the house. 
he was obsessed with this stuff. I think the very formation and the key to Scientology, and even Nibs relayed this that his father said. He said, it's not what people think works in Scientology, the, you know, the tech. The thing that works is the black magic. That is the tech. That's the magic tech. And that actually works. It works to do what? It works to give you all the riches in this world to make you super rich by hypnotizing people and using them and robbing them of their money, their life, and their time. And then when you, the deal in this religion is when you exit this world, your soul is then owned by Satan. So he felt, and to me, it seems like it works because he got out of here unscathed and he burned his name in fire like he wanted to. He thought this religion would give him exactly what he got. So he made a lot. The, the only these people are such idiots too by the way one because we talked about this earlier it doesn't occur to them that this is ever that you shouldn't be evil to begin with because as soon as you start doing something to remove somebody's free will from them to think that that wouldn't somehow come back and haunt you hubbard was paranoid he had to hide out he had to you know move constantly wear disguises. Yeah, yeah. dude who wants to live why would you even like is is money and power that worth it where you want you yourself want to give up your life and and attach yourself to evil like why the heck would anybody i've never understood this obsession with money because like i i just wanted to uh, i'm still having my mind blown at this world because i just innocently grew up wanting to be an artist an actor i wanted to express myself to me that felt natural i didn't like school I didn't like to go with the program. I felt like I was being programmed, even though I didn't know it. So to realize that, you know, this life isn't about just doing well and you'll rise to the top. If you work hard and acting, they'll eventually, you know, get work. Dude, it's nothing like that. Like, uh, it basically is like, if you don't sort of give yourself over to the dark side or sell yourself out, it's very hard to advance. And it's all about money, money, money. It's like, Hubbard wanted freaking money. That was his main thing. And it's like, my, I don't want to throw my dad under the bus, but he's absolutely obsessed with money. All Scientologists think about is money. Money. I just need enough to survive and, 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 and just, I don't need much, dude. It's like, what's but the, they need why money would you sell keep, your soul just for money? Right. But they need money to get more Scientology, right? So they're always obsessed with money that's that's the thing man it's like i only wanted to get money because i believed in this in this spiritual technology once you can hook somebody in that it's like they're doing good or they're going spiritually free yeah you'll work your butt off for them every dollar that i made went back to scientology yeah it's incredible how they got people i mean that was really kind of hubbard's upgrade from crowley who crowley didn't get enough of his followers to give him money but hubbard really right. made that turn where he made everybody like you said, he took everybody. everything. He took everything and threw it into a smorgasbord. He was a brilliant man. I don't I give him that. You he know, he's just totally evil. Um, totally evil person. I mean, I think his son, I mean, for I'm people saying. who don't know, son went by Junior, L. Ron Hubbard Jr., Nivs, D. Wolf. Mm -hmm. He kept changing, having to change his name. But he was really there with his dad from the beginning, at least 48 or 50, until their relationship soured. So he really was there and saw the foundation of Scientology. And he couldn't publish his stuff pre-internet. There was a famous article on Penthouse, and he mm -hmm. just was he was just harassed all the time. But I think he would, there was, I think, a congressional hearing, so he gave testimony there. But he, uh, yeah, he, he really knew all the stuff. I quote him a lot in my book, because he saw his dad with the Crowley stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think in the Philadelphia lectures, Crowley, I mean, Hubbard, References, there was a great musician who knew stuff from the 13th, 14th centuries. Aleister Crowley, the beasts, says Hubbard. So Hubbard really mentions him and knows, knows who Crowley was. So he was kind of carrying on that tradition. And he believed in these rituals, the abortion, you know, again, it said that he was uh, doing abortions uh, as a ritual, man. I, I personally think that, okay, so Nibs, you know, had his own motivations. He too was after money, but his, he didn't like the ex Scientologists either. His main motivation was to get back at his freaking father. So he's not the perfect character, but when he talks about um, this stuff, yeah, I'd say probably 80% of it's, you know, pretty damn accurate because one of the things he highlights is that Satanism was the only religion in our family. This guy was doing abortion rituals. He was giving him nibs or DeWolf, 
um, drugs to, you know, drug trips as a kid and, you know, to get him to spout out some of the tech. And he was an evil, evil man. And he totally thought that this was the key to everything else. And I think that he might have taken it to another level. And he was smarter than Crowley in the fact that, like you said, he figured out how to actually make money off this thing. And to get, I, I think it's, I, I think it's whatever you want, William. I think if you're willing to sell your soul out for money and you're willing to delete your conscience, because conscience, most people have conscience. So it's really easy. If you can delete, it's all about getting rid of that conscience because most people cannot have a conscience. So therefore they can't, it's like, it's like crossing over the bridge, man. Once you, it's like, once you can it's make a bridge that to cross, total freedom, right? Freedom from I think conscience. That's what right? he meant by the bridge, though. The bridge um, to the other realm, where it's all about deleting the conscience, so that then you can do the most blasphemous, the most evil, the most sick. That's what that that religion um, was all about. So once you cross it's that, interesting. Divide, I was reading just to you interrupt. Can, you can, right, sure. But there, I'm reading something about the autobiography, a psychological analysis of Hitler. And when he got done with World War I, that was one of the first things he said and stated was, I'm going to destroy the conscience. It's a, and my conscience wow. is my enemy. Yeah, he said really profound things wow. about destroying wow. something that's a normal part of the human experience. And that probably was one of the components that led him to all of the horrible stuff. He just intentionally destroyed his conscience. Definitely. Crazy. And you know, so yeah. you see that in Hubbard too, right? definitely so i mean yeah the, the hubbard's an evil guy there's mk ultra in the, all of this technology that's inter interwoven into scientology i mean it's just there's so much scientology like you talk i think you did a show on manson and son of sam like there's scientology having to do with both of those stories right manson and the son of sam well it's an off this is how i see it like you read Dave McGowan's program to kill? Sure. Obviously, right? You're up yeah, to speed yeah. on Dave McGowan's work. Very much. Uh, the reason I bring that up is because this is the way I see it. The serial killers, the lone nut serial killers, the Manson story, David Berkowitz, these are fall guys. So we get the movie version showing to us. They make, they're actually bought blockbuster hits. The true story of Manson, if you listen to Tom O'Neill or read his book, if you read David McGowan's work and many other people, and I know both. you're up to speed, yeah, these are it's co cover stories. Yeah, these are cover stories to sell movies and stuff. And also too, like we were talking about earlier, embedded into the human psyche, the subconscious to program people. So that if you say something that's outside of that narrative, it's it's uh, the, the television got there first. The movie got there first. So by the way, people yeah. innocently think they're watching movies, but they're constantly being, uh, their subconscious is just being overloaded and they're being programmed television programming right i mean it's even in the words dude hubbard would tell us like upper indoctrination he he's it's so bizarre that we couldn't even see this because they're telling you you're they're programming you they're using those words and yet you go wow yeah whatever anyways i think it works like this the lone nut serial killer story everyone from berkowitz to manson to just a million other ones that dave mcgowan covers in that book are the fall guys there's always a cult behind it whether it's the hand of death cult uh, with Henry Lee Lucas, whether it's the Process Church and its offshoots, the 22 Disciples of Hell, I believe, and the Children, right, yeah. uh, which is an offshoot of Scientology, it they they always splinter. And so it goes to cover story, low nut serial killer, to cover up the activities of the cult, murder, snuff films, etc. And then behind that, you have the intelligence agencies that create them, either bring them into being this, or they allow them to exist like Jonestown. So that's that's the pyramid, right? And then if we go beyond what's at the top of that, controlling everything, what do you think, William? Satan? Evil? What do you think? Yeah, just a bad, <laughs> bad. I mean, isn't that ties a lot of these guys together? Is there Satanism or occultism? Certainly, yeah. Hubbard. And all totally. totally. And also, it's just that's what I learned. Like, it was just like coming out of Scientology where you have to kind of, you were, I was just a newbie at the bottom of the pyramid. So I thought Scientology was about this, but then you learn yeah. more and you try to find out what yeah. it was really about. And then finally, you can see it. Well, the same thing happening in the world. Yeah. So you have to penetrate beyond just the cult, beyond, oh, you can, oh, the process church. That's so sexy. And then you keep, you keep penetrating. Oh, the low nut zero. Cause, oh my God, there was something behind that. They were all involved in cults where they, they some of these people were hitmen. 
oh my, there's intelligence agencies behind this. What's up with Jim Jones was an MK Ultra experiment? What? So you start penetrating these things, right? And I think the whole idea is to make it so many layers of buffering. The dude, unless you make this your business to work it out, which fuck freaking took me like 10 years, you're just going to get sidetracked into all the cult sexiness. And maybe it was just, you know what I mean? It's like, there's a, to yes. me, there's like this huge picture. I know, you know, this, cause I watch all, I watch all your videos, man. And I, I learned so much from you, dude. And your guests, can I ask you a question? Like, sure. You are, like, a, you know, more about Scientology than the ex Scientologist do. I've been watching all these guests that you have on dude. Are you just like an encyclopedia of knowledge at this point with all these guests and everything you've learned? I'm getting close. I'm getting close to being an encyclopedia. <laughs> but I learned, you know, it all, the web of knowledge yeah, just kind of overlaps. It, it never so ends. Cults yeah. teach the cults, Scientology, Crowley. And then you have a better understanding of the wor world. And then you're actually inoculating people from getting into these alleyways where literal wizards of oz can take you on a journey that yeah. uh isn't that great i mean even nib said at the end scientology represent the worst in the human experience the rape of the soul so really i mean i think that hubbard was really going for something even beyond the mind which was just to really Dude, definitely totally in cold i mean almost like you're in a matrix like you're an energy um in some kind of a battery system where you just become totally con controlled and your own free will is gone. Like you don't even know it. And uh, I think you so can see that in Nazism that too. Look at what Hitler did. Yeah. With, I mean, I think Hitler was probably using somewhat similar techniques as, as Hubbard, I mean, controlling people, oh, just constantly was. hitting them with with propaganda. They don't know what Repetition, the outside world. And any, any was a, he was yeah. heavily into black magic. They all they all Absolutely. have the same mo, don't they? They learn from the same manual, and they all have the same characteristics. Shut down yeah. the conscience. Yep. Get it and start learning some of this occultic knowledge, and then um, the enemy's over then, there. So Hunter, Hubbard had it down really well yeah. when he went after psychiatry. Yeah. That's psychiatry. the problem because he was half not right us. too. He was also it's half them. right. Yeah. Right. It's not us. We have the perfect. We're the perfect, you know, paladins of truth. But they're the bad guys. They're the ones taking people off. So anyway, you can see this part of history. And what did Crowley famously yeah. say after the whole war was ended, World War II? He said. Before Hitler was, I am. So it was a play on the New Testament saying mm -hmm. that a lot. Of, he understood, I think, that a lot of what Hitler did was very similar to his ideology. So I wrote that Absolutely. in my book, The Ideology of Evil. Yeah. What so, book is that, William? It's in Children yeah. of the Beast. Children, Children of okay. the Beast. Okay. Okay. But yeah. yeah you, can, you can read about Hitler because you just see these similarities in these guys that what they do to themselves to, to really harm other people and stuff like that the ability to harm other people. what have you concluded in all the knowledge and stuff how would you describe what's going on well i just see the i see i just have a biblical worldview so i do see mm -hmm. um you know as a christian i do see that darkness exists evil exists and you can see that in people i mean i i mean for me like i'm inoculated a bunch a bunch of all that stuff because i believe that what christ said was true so the new testament for me is that opposition to cults and mind control and things like that. Mm -hmm. That to me is like their true freedom is through Christ because mm -hmm. the teachings keep you from sin and error. So I see, I mean, that really Christ is the triumph over sin and death, right? So they're all what Christ mm -hmm. achieved. So I think that a lot of those things through Christ, you avoid some of the problems like almost all my even the true crime is an action of sin in the world i mean it's not overt mm -hmm. but you see people's errors uh, causing harm to other and things like that and cults i mean you you strip these things down these guys at the top are occultists satanists magicians mm -hmm. much more so than you would ever think and they're, they're all a lot of them are very similar very deceptive controlling so i think uh I mean, that's what so I've you learned, see just going over, yeah, same patterns over and over. Same pattern, right? Hubbard, Jim Jones, I mean, it just goes on, all these, all these, Keith exactly Raniere. Exactly. Do you know that Keith yeah. Raniere was influenced by Crowley, Space Opera, Hubbard, Dianetics, Ekan Carr, it's, like all this stuff, yeah. That's Hubbard. another perfect example. I mean, he's almost a clone of Hubbard and Scientology, but it, because he mixed the salesman technique and everything. Manson too, you know, even though he was um, 
a puppet uh, from those above and definitely was an MK Ultra project and used, dude, used for a purpose. See, that's the thing. He was William clear. Mike. Do you know that Manson was clear? Yeah, he says that. Um, well, it's in the uh, Bully OC. Uh, you know, OJ Simpson. OJ Simpson said he got to the state of clear too. Well, it's in was, what? I'm not what surprised. Saying? It's in the Bugliosi book, right? Uh, the guy who prosecuted him said it's in the Bugliosi book where Manson went into a Scientology center and the guy, he told him everything he knew. And the guy in the Scientology center said, I, there's nothing else I can teach you because he had already absorbed everything. I know he got processed and I know he had about 100 to 150 hours while he was at McNeil Island. Do you have any more information on that? Yeah, that's from the Bugliosi book. I'm going to look it up right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we know Bugliosi's a complete psychopath and he lied. But but have you been able to well, sift that, through? Because, yeah. uh, dude, I mean, that book, man. That's the I biggest do. selling book. And Tom O'Neill rips hit that apart. I know, he rips it apart. But it is yeah. the number one selling true crime book of all I know. time. Can you believe it? There's another example where I can believe it. This is exactly what we were talking about earlier. Sell the movie version to the public so the truth never comes out. And Bugliosi was an absolute tool and shaked his butt out there for money and fame and gave a complete BS cover-up version. You read that book by Tom O'Neill, right? If people oh, yeah, have read that, that you know, I shatter. You interviewed yeah, I, that guy? Yeah, he's on my show. I'll I'll I'll, I'll dust it off and put Dude, it up. That's I, awesome. inter I interviewed him right when the book came out before Rogan oh, you interviewed lucky, him. Man. So all of that stuff, like all see you're on that. You're on this stuff, William. That's why I love the guests you have, man. Yeah, you gotta put that back up. Um man, did he crack that open? I, I often wondered about do you, I mean, oh, no. you so here, do here's you, a quote. This is from Peter Lavenda, Sinister Forces. When Manson was released in 1967, he went to the Scientology Center in San Francisco. Family member, little Paul Watkins, who accompanied him there, told me, Charlie said to them, I'm clear. What do I do now? Mm -hmm. In Los Angeles, he went to the Scientology Celebrity Center. Now, this was more like it. Here he could mingle with the elite. I managed to obtain a copy of the original log entry, 73168, new name, Charlie Manson. No address. Ethics type three, the rece receptionist who by type three meant psychotic, sent him to the ethics mm -hmm. office and he never showed up. Now, what do you think of Lavenda? I mean, I know that there's there's debate. But yeah, but I have to answer that in long sentences because Lavenda is probably according to the copyright office and the document I saw, if it's legit, that means Lavenda wrote the Necronomicon as Simon. But Lavenda, mm -hmm. there's pictures of him in an OTO ritual. So I know he's hanging out with other OTO members, Wasserman. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He wrote the intro to a book that really changed my Prophet of Evil book, which I've been talking about because it's 20 years since 9-11. But this other book mm -hmm. that, I mean, for me was just a d disgrace. That was my opinion. But he was involved in that kind of whitewashing some of the stuff I put in my book, which is all about Crowley and, mm -hmm. and kind of numerology. But Lavenda's, uh, for me, is... a. Uh, knowing occultist who worked at the magical child which was an occult bookstore in new york city like that's his self-admission but i've communicated with lavenda but, oh uh, yeah, yeah i mean that's I, why i go back and forth on that guy i mean you know what what he's saying there about him actually going to and being to the center and being type three all that so they got scientology into the prisons um right not through well, criminal, i think that's where he said um, he learned about later but well, this is what happens. They only had Dianetics then. So when he says he went clear, he wasn't on the E-meter in prison. He was doing Dianetic auditing, which is just two people sitting next to each other. And I believe um, Lanier Remer and a couple other people introduced him to Scientology. And what they would have done is Dianetic auditing. And then he would have attest to, or because Dianetics says you can reach a state of, state of clear by doing this processing. So I felt like, because OJ said the same thing, and this is what I think OJ was up to. He wasn't a hardcore Scientologist. He just did Dianetic auditing, I'm supposing here, because I have a clip of him talking about this where he's chief clear and he tried to reach out to Hubbard and stuff. He um, he would have just done Dianetics like Manson and says, oh, I achieved a state of clear. This is because it describes it. So you could, according to Hubbard, go clear and Dianetics. But but William, because he wasn't, um, he be, then because of that bankrupt and he had to start something new, and it, what, he wasn't making a lot of money because people could just get together for free and use Dianetics. But then he says, wait a minute, you can't really go clear in Dianetics. You need to use Scientology. 
So he always changed the story as he went on to how can I make the most money? And everybody was trying to steal his tech, like the process church, right? People were constantly splintering off. Even Ranieri right. to this day, you know, stole Hubbard stuff. That's what I'm saying. I think the intelligence agencies, while he was part of them, was also fighting him because he he has a brilliant technology to hypnotize people and control the crap out of them and maybe even connect them up to the red man. And you would have no idea that's happening. Dude, William, Amazing. I'm telling you, like, it is a trip to go that far deep, to get up those OT levels, to, to get that deep into darkness, feeling like a totally normal person. Nobody knew anything was wrong with me. Waking up with, I'm still recovering to this day, 13 years later. It is such a bizarre, weird, it, I, do you know what it feels like to have your soul literally taken over? Because I'm not even a religious person, and I know that that happened. So I know what it's like to get into the to who you actually are, and somehow siphon it off elsewhere. It sounds crazy, and I I wanted to avoid this stuff too, because I didn't want to go back into Scientology woo 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 land. But I had to actually confront this in order to get my soul back. Because dude, there's something to that black magic. Because he, you can. I don't even know how to describe it, man, but it scares the crap out of me just talking about it, dude. And that's why I'm so happy. I would give anything. It's very dark. It. But yeah, you're it's, not, it's, the it's, thing is, is you're not alone, Doug. There's so many Scientologists dark. like you. There's so many Scientologists like you. I know, bro. They've had a very profound experience, like yeah, surviving right. Jim Jones, Jim Jones, yeah. Jonestown or something like yeah. that. Those survivors yeah. are traumatized, damaged forever, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not saying Scientology is the only one. Jim, yeah, I've seen some of those interviews too, by the way, recently. They know what it's like to, we're really, what's really scary though in super evil, William, is that let's just hypothetically say you were to apply this to the world. To take people's soul and free will and who they actually are away permanently and where they wouldn't even notice it, like Huxley talked, how people would right. just love their servitude. That's a really, really scary reality, dude. Like that, I would have thought that was science fiction or not possible unless I confirmed in the most crappy way possible that that's a reality. And that's what these master occultists not only believe in, but they know that it works. I give you cults. I give you Scientology. You know? Right. We get into it. I mean, I'll, the one of the things you learn, I've had readings or done readings in enough occultism that the 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 corollary the mind the mind control is the handmaiden of the occultists. They're always involved in manipulating people. It goes from what I just read about the ONA is about manipulating people, Crowley, Church of Satan, Nazis. I mean, all these guys. They're always very involved in getting into other people's brains and getting them to do their will. They just do that, and Scientology is a perfect example. That's great what you put up here too, right away, perfectly. So from Helter Skelter by Vincent Bugliosi, Paul Watkins and Bugliosi interviewed him about Manson philosophy. Manson had told him that while he was in prison, he'd studied Scientology becoming a theta. That would be theta clear, I guess, in those terms, which Manson defined as being a clear. Yeah, the technology got so much more advanced um, back when Manson was doing it in, in the early 50s. Because once you get into Scientology, it's nothing like sitting down, reading a book and doing a session with your buddy. It's a whole different machine. <laughs> also, you know, another interesting thing is that Project MK Ultra was started in April of 1953. And just coincidentally, Hubbard, I'm going to lay this down in one of the videos because it's too much to get into. But Dianetics went bankrupt, Don Purcell or some other character. He came along and basically resurrected um, Scientology. All of a sudden, when Hubbard looked like that was a dead end, it was on the bestseller, but all of a sudden, you know, it, it was a quackery and it, it, his fame went away. Um, in December of 1963 is when Scientology became incorporated and became Scientology. There was perhaps some deals going on there. Do you understand what I mean? What do you I mean? Deals like... like uh... I well, Hubbard has a technology with Dianetics on, you know, again, what Jolly West was figuring out because Jolly and his, his MK Ultra crew was monitoring or, you know, they were interested right. in what cults were doing. And of course, they're going to run across Hubbard and they would they were interested in what he had. So if I was in their shoes, um, 
I would want what Hubbard was was doing, or if I couldn't own it, because Hubbard wanted everything to himself, he'd perhaps make a deal with him to have, you know, to ex get his, um, pick him up from Dianetics and get him to create Scientology and perhaps, you know, uh, make it a little more global and give Hubbard what he wants or whatever. He worked with everybody, the KGB, he imported drugs. Dude, I again, behind these cults, you find pedophilia, child trafficking, you find everything that you find in Epstein, and elements of, you know, what Keith or Neri was doing in there. So maybe some will be a little more heavy on the child trafficking, or maybe some won't have it at all, but they'll hit the, the, um, the, they'll hit labor trafficking, like Scientology or drug smuggling, which, you know, again, a son, uh, said that he was involved in these things. So when you look beyond the veneer and you start understanding the background in which it came out of and understand other cults, dude, they all are involved in criminal activities doing the same thing. And the cults are a cover for that. And they also work to program the celebrities. You get so many benefits by something like Scientology. Everything from running drugs to having John Travolta and Tom Cruise sell Scientology and get a bunch of people in. And we're all paying for our own enslavement. There's no benefit of any of this. It's only benefiting Hubbard and the dark side. That's, that's what I'm talking about, how we can give our minds and souls away so much so that we'll walk into a tyranny smiling like I did. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. And people go come in and then come out. Like they're just like yeah, it's really an incredible out. event. Some people go last five years, some don't get out, some come in and they just look back on what the heck just happened. Like I just went into a completely different a mind like a time warp or a mind warp where there's just a whole different personality for 10 years. And that whole language too, I've noticed like the commonality of this different completely almost a different language that scientology has different meanings almost it's like communism where they talk about their own language of oppression that doesn't it's a skewed from normal vernacular parlance and uh, scientology like that was one component that i think was very successful where they mm -hmm. just had their own jargon right can you talk more about that Anything you'd like to know specifically, because what you said is part of the mind control by and Hubbard was a master wordsmith. That was one of his affirmations that he had a magical power with words. Again, we're back to Crowley to be able to can pick those specific words clear um, OT, which comes from the OTO, you know, about the occult, their super, their words, their numbers or symbols, the dates that they do the rituals on all that's part of it. So even his word his the dictionary's that thick william of like right, terms and i yeah. i couldn't i still even once in a while accidentally say those words they're so stupid when i listen to them now it sounds like a bunch of sci-fi gibberish but he was a hypnotist so those words even the word clear remember you're when you're getting auditing you're having your creative imagination used to implant his suggestions so when you're being hypnotized, which is what, exactly what auditing is, especially with the soup cans, um, and you're running an electric current through someone's body, and you're having them go back in their track using their creative imagination, once you do that, you're very suggestible. There's nothing wrong with the imagination, obviously. It's the focus of attention that he's holding. So I got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of hours of these auditing sessions, believing 100% that I was so-and-so in a past life and a this and this, because they eventually take you past lives, all sorts of things, just using my imagination. And by the way, that's what, you know, you and Cameron and stuff was discovering that you don't need to beat somebody over the head or electrocute them or anything. You just need to use their creative imaginations to implant suggestions. And this is why we had people like Sirhan Sirhan, which is now back in the news and stuff. Who was there but Jolly West implanting false memories right. and getting this is dude, this is what this is what we we're talking about, the lone nut serial killers and the people that were set up. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is look into McGowan's work and look behind these MK Ultra doctors or Hubbard and realizing they have something that's pretty easy to figure out, but it's powerful and you're screwed if you get involved in it. You're gonna have you can't tell the difference between a real memory and something implanted like that. And if that and happens to you. There's been tons of mind controlled killers too. Many, many That's, in the news. This is I think what they use, is what I was trying to say, William. Like, right, yeah, I think I can, 
they do other things, but Scientology does the same thing. So, and it's something people can understand because this, when you say MK Ultra, people start getting like, well, let's see some, like, what are you talking about exactly? The auditing itself is set up to do what Jolly West would have done with Sirhan Sirhan. It's really simple. Remember they were using, L. Ron Hubbard did not only knew about MK Ultra before anybody else. He talked about it in 1951 in a book called Science to Survival, and he called it pain drug hypnosis. So you'd asked me earlier, by the way, how he found that out or kind of, you know, he I I don't know. Like I said, I'm still going that down that rabbit hole, but he used the Kubark manual, which is a CIA manual, and he used Alice in Wonderland, and he knew about Project MK Ultra in 1951. So how did he know that when nobody knew about it until 1974? That program was set, was kept so compartmentalized that even the people that were involved that were really in the know had no idea what they were really like a part of. Everything was kept compartmentalized. And that begs the question, what's happening right now that with the advancement of technology that we're not going to know about until, you know, 2050, when we're all in inter- enslavement camps. Right. Going, oh, I, I'm glad we figured it out, but it's a little bit too late then. <laughs> a lot. There's a lot going on right now. But, I mean, I think that guy yeah. Holmes, the, the if you remember the Batman killer who was in Chicago, and he went in yeah. and shot all those people. There's that, another one. There's another. That, that guy was totally him. lucid and saying there's old videos of him. He was actually, I think, a student of neurology. And he was just totally lucid, giving talks. He was there's a pic, there's stuff of him. And within a couple of years, man, he was yep. a ride. That reminds me of Ted Kaczynski, dude, the Unabomber. Well, I mean, what did they do with him? They yeah. with with the with the homes and all these other um, crazy people that go crazy and shoot some over the gun. Yeah, sure, there's there's killings, of course there are. But the high profile ones, the ones that are put on the news, these are mind control victims that are having the same programming done that we just talked about. With, the, with, with what they do in Scientology. That's why Tom Cruise or John Travolta, people think they're stupid. They're not stupid. They're hypnotized. They've had false memories. They had this auditing. Tom Cruise, I think, is on OT7. He's had how many thousands of hours of false implanting? What would prevent him from going up and being like, there's a very fine line between being a James Holmes and a Tom Cruise. There's no difference. It's just what role are they going to decide that you play? Are you going to be the, was Manson going to be a musician and make it like the monkeys and, and the um, Beach Boys? Or are we going to have him play this role over here because we need him for this psyop? It's almost right. like, and the thing is, we're all playing a role unless we wake up, dude, because how do we know? We, this is really scary to actually talk about, dude, because I was playing a role where I would have killed for Hubbard. I would have died for Scientology. You're never going to talk me out of it. Never. So, you know, it, it's not a matter of intelligence or, you know. Right. John no, it's Cole. definitely you say not. what you want about these people. But I think a lot of them are, are victimized by this technology. We're both in L.A. You can go down to Hollywood Boulevard and see those people, you know, shilling for Scientology. They are yeah. true believers and they're not all... Yeah. They're not two digit IQ people. So something much more profound is happening beyond right. the intellect with Definitely. Scientology. And that's what people have to understand. Like you said with Holmes and Kaczynski, these guys are really intelligent. I talked about in one of the interviews, in order for this MK Ultra mind programming to work, they need certain intelligent people. It doesn't mean that you can't be hypnotized by being a dumbass, but in order, see, you're going to have to take trauma. You know, Kathy O'Brien, she talks about this and she would back this up. You have to be able, and she was at the highest level of this stuff and somehow survived to tell about it. It's the same thing that she's talking about that Scientology and these other cults are doing. You have to have, you're going to split the mind into several personalities. This is the creating of the Venturian candidates, not having memories. If you shot someone, that's how they can get a lone nut serial killer to do that and then have no memory of what happened. This is down to a freaking science. So they have, um, they basically have, uh, I, did I lose you or am I on like just the big screen now? <laughs> did you go somewhere? I think I lost you one. Let me know when you can hear me. I just hit the wrong button. Sorry. Go ahead. Keep talking. All right. I can see you coming back. Yeah. There we go. Sorry. 
talking are you messing with StreamYard too much, young man? I, no, I was <laughs> trying to find. I'm trying to find your YouTube channel so I could get off the worm of that. I, I've just been learning about that app, by the way, bro. I don't, oh, it really works really well. I highly I love it. I love it, dude. StreamYard, you're doing, yeah. Uh, you're doing I'll interviews. Look. Highly recommend. So where were you? Keep continue, continue talking. Hit me with where we were at, bro. We so were at um, just the power of this programming. So there's some MPL oh, yeah. stuff. These guys are getting it. Jolly and West is all over the board. Timothy McVeigh. Yeah. Uh, Sirhan Sirhan. Just so many different uh, OJ a, um, uh, Patty OJ. Hurst. He did Pat. He, he Patty he, Hurst. Patty Hurst. He was uh, behind the scenes on Jack that one. Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby. Yes. Yeah. I mean, All, his, yes. His real history is so cr- incredible. And I think he was right here in UCLA. Just like a weird story. Yeah, like he was. He Which, is, by the way, he, that's where Morrison and all these, you know, they did a lot of these programming at the university. Stanford, wow, UCLA was good. another one. You know that. And also, check this out, bro. I was just watching this video with Jolly West. This this explains the controlled opposition just real quick and why it's hard to get out of Scientology. And it's, it's such a mind F. There's so many different confusions. <clears throat> There's a video that I was just watching in 2014 that had Hannah Whitfield, a top whistleblower, sitting there and a, a whole bunch of ex-Scientologists with Jolly West thinking, okay, now I got out of Scientology. Wow. Dude, I got to show you these videos. Wow. I'm going to I'm gonna do about a, a video about this week because it's so mind-blowing. Yeah, and it also is going to be a good tool to explain kind of just how, how the two oppo sames work. But, right, you're going dude, from they, one you, side to the other control. Wow, that's incredible. Dude, wow. this this is what I'm telling you. This I don't even I don't even think people are purposely trying to do that. They just don't. It's a tr- it's hard. They like I said, they're, yeah, they're yeah. Just that's going where from one frying pan to another fryer. Wow, that's amazing. yes. And check this out though in this video. So they're all a plot. Okay, so like I said, Jolly West was psychiatrist enemy number one as Scientologist. So now Hannah Whitfield and company are thinking psychiatry isn't that bad. Now I. I do think we overdrug and all that stuff. Elwin Hubbard, some of that right, has some of that right, but I don't oh, have no doubt we overdrug. Oh, yeah. for sure. But I don't have this crazy phobia programming where we're super extreme in Scientology. So I, I you know, there's a, there's a, a middle ground, in my opinion. But what happens is, and this is what happens a lot when you, come, when you don't realize that the opposition is usually controlled as well. So they're sitting there applauding. I mean, this guy looks evil. The stuff, it's just crazy. Three hours of video with this madman, but telling some really interesting stuff. And they're lapping it up. They're like, oh yeah, we're out of Scientology now. We knew Jolly was the good guy. He must be because oh, Hubbard was against him. This is the throwing the baby out with the bathwater type scenario. And then you get the indie Scientologist, right, bro? Where they do hold on to Hubbard had the tech right. They never figure out that he was a black magician, that he's evil, or, or they go, okay, maybe you got some things right. It's like all these different levels. And usually the one that people land at eventually is like we were talking about at the beginning of this conversation, where they think, thank God I got out of Scientology. Everything that Hubbard said must have been BS. Um, now I'm just going to believe in mainstream science and psychiatry is great. And, you know, so that's that. It's just, dude, it's crazy right. watching that video with this. That guy should be incarnated many times over and jailed to pay for the crimes that he did that guy yeah. like tortured he was, a, he was the cia he was, asset of the mk ultra project and, so and in the video and in the ultra, video he, like hubbard right. he, he was trying to baffle the ex-scientologist with his brilliant uh witty uh humor so he says oh yeah hubbard said i was a cia and part of the kgb i guess that makes me a double agent <laughs> and all the scientologists wow. were like so Dude, he goes from he covered, was calling him out correctly wow. is what I'm right. saying. Yeah. Right. Well, himself probably being a CIA or at least an asset. So this is what I would, you know, they fight each other. And then the poor ex-Scientologist the in the middle of this I'm battle. The theater, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But I don't even think they believe it's theater, though, because Jolly West would believe, like any psychopath, like Hubbard, they believe and justify and have a split mind as to why they, he, I think Jolly West really felt like psychiatry is the correct technology and hubbard's cult is influencing and very very damaging he was right about it it was very very damaging but look at what he was doing dude right i wonder if he he almost made hubbard look somewhat not as evil as he was i mean that guy was bad dude oh and he's up there joking with the ex-scientologist yeah but a lot of it's a video put out by mark bunker by the way 
you know, Mark Bunker's running for councilman and there they are, you know, sitting in promoting somebody doing the exact same that Hubbard was doing. This is what it's like wheels within wheels. And it's like a spider's web. Wow. It's really incredible. I mean, you really think about it. Like yeah, it's man. But here's I have the spent thing. a lot of time thinking about it. But here's the tendrils of control, right? You, you don't, the people on one side don't see the other, but yeah. you don't also see the log rolling, which I've seen in certain environments where they, I know, they know each other behind the curtain, but they play like they don't know. So say, they, they say more about have, that. Tell me more. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying that I know. I won't. I won't explain the environments, but these people know that they're part of an organization, and they're not disclosing it. But then mm -hmm. they, they're so the opposition is fake. So that do they, you think that they always know that they're fake, or do you think they're no, kept compartment, compartmentalized? They might too? be compartmentalized. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if Jolly and West knew what was going on. If he's as, as, as skilled a MK Ultra scientist as he was, he had to have known yeah. that the same techniques are being inculcated into Scientology. He, he almost couldn't know. prevent himself from accidentally saying that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he had to have known. That's that. what's so funny, where he, he basically says all that, but he's laughing to kind of, dude, it's and just that, like creature inside, grits, creature. Yeah, but that's the inside joke. And yes. The kind of they're, duper's, they're, <laughs> it's duper's delight. So they dude, know yes. they're duping the, the chunks yes. in the public. They tell room. you. They yeah. tell you, too. Hubbard was telling us flat out all the time. I'm... I'm the Prince of Darkness. He said that at the end of the first lecture on the PDC in 1951. He was constantly cackling at how stupid we all were. That's his whole, that's their whole thing, man. Mm -hmm. That's what they do all the time. And it's the same attitude as Crowley, treating all those people with contempt. You're disposable. Uh, all those people are used by, well, I mean, it's the same themes. Wow. Yep. So where can people see your YouTube channel? Again, it's dazed, but not confused. So people go to YouTube and check that out. Do you want to talk about some of the recent research you've been doing? Sure. And thanks for having me on too, I man. I mean, I love talking to you, bro. I, I mean, I, so I love these kind of chats, dude. Um, what was the question? Where people, well, yeah, there's wanted, a YouTube channel out there. Yeah. You've put out okay, like, some of the latest. Yes. Thank you. That's a perfect opportunity. That's the waste of video on this. Cause I wanted to tell people that there's three things on this channel that I've been working on. It started out with the Raised in the Secret Society series, telling my story and breaking down Scientology step by step. So we're right in the middle of season two, with the next episode being the Summer of PsyOps part two. And then I added these cult clips to be able to talk about Jolly West. That's going to be the next one. And things that we can't cover on the series because that follows a specific structure. But we can cover so much information answering viewers' questions and anything else on the cult clips. And then I started doing um, podcasts recently because I get sick of just talking my, about my, I don't like to talk about myself. So it's cool to have um, these awesome guests on. We've had ex-Scientologists. We had a narcissistic psychopath breaking down narcissism. And then my good friend Kelly coming on talking about her sex trafficking documentary, which she just did a few days ago. Anybody that wants to come on that has anything to share, um, you know, please reach out because um, there's, you know, we talked about at the very beginning, what can we do to about the situation? Right. Have as much people share their stories and information as possible. So where can people reach out to you? What's the best means? I kind of don't, I mean, I have all the Instagram, the Facebook and, and the, and the, and that stuff, but I just hate social media. So I don't really want. What about your email? Yeah. I mean, you want to share Yeah, people email? can con, yeah. Doug Scott Kramer at gmail.com. And then people can follow me on Instagram and throw a message over there and stuff. I just. Are you days, all. are you days, but not confused on Instagram as well? Probably. Or Doug I'm not, Kramer. It's K-R-A-M-E-R. But you can also it, reach out to me. Somebody asked a question. What's the difference between Scientology and Kabbalah? I'd say that's a lot. Do you ever come across Kabbalah? Well, ideas of Scientology? I don't know. Mm, no, but I mean, it's another form of at its core, uh, the occult. So, it, dude, it's all exactly the same thing, basically. I mean, they're not going to throw you on the E-meter in Kabbalah, but we know Madonna and the other elite. That's There's a perfect example of the Hollywood people are involved in some form of cult or mind control. Yeah. Not all of them. Center, yeah. Madonna, especially. I mean, dude, again, does any there's the there's what you're showing when I was growing up looking at Madonna, and then there's what you learn about this creature later on, and it's like, jeez, man. That's crazy. And again, your wet your YouTube channel is dazed but not confused. People go check that out. He's been putting out cult podcasts. 
Um, Jolly Bridgeburner says, thanks, William and Doug. Really interesting discussion. Yeah. Thank you, Jolly. And, uh, let's do it again. We, we're a year apart. Let's do Anytime. it again sooner. But uh, it's great having you back, Doug. Thanks for You too, man. And then, William, if you ever want to come on and talk about your research and all your awesome work, anytime, investigation, yeah. please hit me up, dude. Yeah, anytime. I'd like to talk to uh, Kelly Galindo. If you could send me her. Oh, absolutely. I'm sure I'd she'd like love to talk to, talk to you. So oh. I'm, I'm, thank you. I, yeah, I, let's I'll, keep in touch. You Okay, absolutely. All right, Take care.